All right, today we're looking at section 2.2. For those of you who have had contemporary math, a lot of this is going to look like things you've seen before. There's a little bit of variation in our notation that we're going to see. I can't remember if it's in this section or the next one, but um, we're going to talk about sets in this section. And we need a little bit of vocabulary so that we're all using the same terms to mean the same thing. And so for starters, we're going to define what we mean by a set. Um, a set is simply any collection of objects. And elements are those objects. <laughs> so the set can be the set of people taking uh, number theory at 12 p.m. Or, yeah, 12 p.m. You say p.m. for afternoon, right? The p.m. thing really confuses me with 12s. Okay, uh, 12 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday in spring 2024. Like you guys are a set. You're a set of students. Um, the set can be um, the books that are on the bookshelf in your dorm room. Um, the set can be uh, the music files that are in your phone um, or that you access regularly or something like that. So a set can be any collection of, of any objects, and those objects are called elements. There's two ways that we're going to describe sets. The one you're going to like the most is the listing or the roster method, unless you've got a whole lot of things. Okay. So the listing or the roster method literally lists out every single item in that set. So we could do that for this classroom. There's not that many of us, right? You just write everybody's name down, we're good to go. Um, that might not work very well with the friends in your whatever social media you use list. I don't know how many you have, but it's probably more than 13, which is what we have in our class, right? Okay, so the more there are, the less appealing the listing or the roster method is, but it's just a list. The second option is called set builder notation. Um, and set builder notation is used primarily when things are, well, at least most useful for things that have that longer listing format, um, but are mathematical in nature. So I'm gonna give you an example, um, a number example for both of these. So if we had a listing or a roster method, we might list the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, we'll stop there, four. Okay, it's the numbers zero through four, it's whole numbers, we might list them like this. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, it's a short list, right? It's compact, it's, it's simple. Um, yeah, it works, we like that. So I'm gonna draw the set builder notation for it and you're going to not like it very much for this particular list especially because it's gonna feel like it's just overly, overly complicated, like it's unnecessary. So set builder notation looks like this. You put an X and you put a bar and I'll read it to you in a second. We're going to say X is less than or equal to four. And we're going to say X is a whole number. So admittedly, this is a lot more to write. And in this particular context, it seems rather unnecessary. And it is. But there are sets for which it's going to be more useful. And I'll do an example for that in just a second. Um, let me show you how this is read, though. We read this. The curly braces, in either case, are representing sets, OK? So sets reside inside of a curly brace. All the elements reside inside of a curly brace. We read this x such that x is less than or equal to 4, which that list it is, right? x is a whole number. OK, so whole numbers start with 0 and they go up. They don't include negatives, no fractions, no decimals, something like that. We'll talk more about the number systems here in just a second. But those would be the whole numbers. OK? So let me put one here that makes it a little bit more reasonable to write it like this, whereas this one maybe wasn't. Let's say instead of these numbers, you had 4, 5, 6, 7. And I'm going to put dot, dot, dot. And let's say it goes to 1,052. I already wrote a 0. 1,052. Now, if you really wrote out the listing method for this and filled in all of the dot, dot, dots, you'd be annoyed, right? You would. That's not very convenient notation. So if I'm doing that same thing, but I'm doing it in set builder notation, it would look like this. You do the X, you do the such that. Okay, that's good. We're going to do the lower end. The smallest number in my list is what? Four. So we start with four. We say less than or equal to X less than or equal to, and the upper end then is my 1,052. And then afterwards, we need to identify again that it's not need decimals and fractions, particularly negatives are not an issue right now because I'm already in the positive numbers, but 
we would say again that x is a whole number. Now we're going to have a shorthand notation for that x is a whole number bit that makes this friendlier in a moment, but for right now that's what we've got. It's just our verbiage there. Okay, so far so good? Okay, so we're going to do the next one. Um, oh, symbols used in set builder notation. Yes, okay. So our symbols that are used in set builder notation are the ones that I was saying that once we have them, we can shortcut the way that I'd wrote, written the previous slide. So the first one we're gonna do is it's a kind of a curly looking E, and it does matter that it looks like curved. Okay, the symbol itself um, changes if you change the way this symbol looks, right? Like it means something different. Um, this symbol means is an element of. Um, so it's sort of a relationship between the element in the set and the set itself. It tells you that it's within that set. So I could say that I am an element of this classroom, right? If all the people in this classroom are my set. Um, or I could say that uh, my husband's phone number is an element of all the contacts in my phone, right? I mean, it's, it's an element of it. It's just one of them, okay? It's an element of. Um, the next set of things I'm going to write down are different number system notations. So our first number system notation I'm going to write down is an N with a double line on the left. Okay, this symbol means natural numbers, Um, natural numbers are the ones that you naturally learn to count with when you're first learning numbers. You start with the number one, right? Actually, let me put it in curly braces so that we can kind of list a little bit of amount. One, and then you go two, and then you go three, and then you continue on, right? Those are the natural numbers. Very quickly after you see natural numbers, you figure out that zero is not there and you kind of need a zero. And so you have the number set that I mentioned on the previous slide, and that's the whole numbers. So it's a W. And the only way that the whole numbers differ from the, natu the uh, natural numbers is because they include a zero. So they sort of start one earlier. So you get to include this zero. Um, I did fail to mention this one up here. I'll put it in now. What do you think happens if you draw a line through the element of symbol? not an element of. So this one is not an element of, just like it's not equal to, right? Sorry, I left that one out. Okay, uh, we have a couple more. Um, after you have the, the whole numbers, right, which include the zero, the next thing that you build upon um, in terms of number systems, not necessarily in terms of order of uh, learning things in schools is the negatives. And so that is going to create what's called the integers. Um, integers are actually the symbol Z. Uh, and it's, I think it's Latin. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's coming from the Latin word for integers. Um, so there's a Z there. So it includes, again, all the whole numbers that we've just created, but they're negations as well, all the negatives. So you get, um, and I'll put the dot, dot, dot over here, like negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and on from there. Those are the integers. A couple other number systems that we will see um, either in this class or if you haven't taken proportional statistical or geometry um, are rational numbers. So rational numbers are actually the letter Q. Uh, the letter Q is actually standing for the word quotient. That's where that comes from. Quotient means division, right? Um, or a ratio, because a fraction is a ratio, or it's a division of two numbers. So these are our rational numbers. Um, so rational numbers do not have a way to write it in the listing method. I can't even pretend. I can't even do it with the dot, dot, dot. It's not possible. So I'm going to write a description down instead. So the description I'm going to write that this is a, um, a ratio. That's not right. There we go. Ratio of integers. So any two numbers um, that can be written as a ratio of integers. I shouldn't say any two numbers. Any number that can be written as ratio of integers. For example, if you had 
0.5, you can write it as 1 over 2, 1 into your integers. Uh, if, you had, uh, if you had 5, you can write 5 as 5 over 1. So it's a ratio of integers. Um, so all of our whole numbers get included because of this description. Um, all the negatives will get included, right, if you had negative 5 over 7. Okay, that's fine. You can even mix up notations. Like, let's say it was negative 5.4 over negative 7.032. Well, you have ability to multiply top and bottom by tens and move decimals around, and then it can turn back into integers. So those work too. So these are our rational numbers. And then there are some numbers that are not rational that include, get included in the real numbers. So R for real. And it will include all the rational numbers, right? And the, the integers, the whole numbers, natural. It includes everything above. But it also includes things that aren't able to be written as a ratio of integers. For example, square root of 2, pi, all right? Things that generally show up in a geometric sense. I know a lot of you took geometry with Dr. Marsh last semester. Those kinds of numbers show up because you're looking at like side lengths of a square, right? Or area of a circle. Um, and so these real numbers that are not rational show up there. So this one includes. Um, I didn't mean to put that, I meant to put this. So all of the above <laughs> plus irrational. An example of irrational would be things like square root of 2 and pi. OK, so I want to go back up a slide. Uh, and take a look at the example that I did before, after you've written this one down. And we're going to write that example in a more condensed form with some symbols. And the set notation actually becomes a little bit easier when we see that, or at least a little bit more brief. Oh, I skipped that, didn't I? OK. Um, all right. So, oh, there it is. That's what I wanted to go to. The set builder notation is what I want to focus on. Right here where I've written x as a whole number in each of these places, I actually have symbols that I can do, and I can rewrite this more condensed. So let me do that. I'm going to cut this. You've got it in your notes anyway, but um, that way I have some more space here. We can say x is an element of w. It's the whole numbers. And it makes it shorthand. Okay? So imagine this is like... Your texting language before texts exist, right? Y'all shorthand everything. I know my kids do. Every now and then they send me some shorthand something. I'm like, I don't know what that is. I gotta go looking it up. What do those three letters go together and mean? I can sometimes figure it out. I can usually figure it out. But, right? You shorthand everything. This is just shorthand, is all it is, right? This is telling you that X is an element of, or it is one of these things that are whole numbers. And the same we can do down here X is an element of the whole numbers. By the way, W's are the hardest ones for me to put the double line on the left. <laughs> Everything else is not hard, but that one always <laughs> looks weird. So, Okay, is that all right? Okay, so let's do an example. This is where I thought I was um, before. So we're going to do this set of all natural numbers. So natural numbers means it doesn't include zeros and then the negatives and stuff too. But the zero is usually the one that people get confused, which where does it get included? It can get included in whole, doesn't get included in natural, okay? And we're going to do the natural numbers less than 5 using the listing method. So they're always going to be inside of curly braces, whichever method you're using. Okay? So what would we start with for the natural numbers less than 5? 1. And then? Okay. Ah, no 5. Why are we not going to include 5? It says less than. So pay attention to the language, right? This one, whoops, didn't mean to click that. Really said less than. So we don't include the 5. Okay, so this is a small list. Um, writing the set builder notation is going to feel like silly. That's okay. We can still do it. It's practice. Curly brace. X such that. Always starts out that way. Okay? You don't have to use X. If you want to be more creative and use a different letter, feel free. But I'm going to use X. And then we want to describe two pieces of information. One that talks about it being less than 5 and one that talks about it being a natural number. So we have to have two pieces, and they don't really need to be in any specific order. So if you flip the order around, that's cool. I usually do the um, less than five, like the inequality part first. So this is x less than five, OK? 
Okay, remember the symbol, that's the less than symbol. And then it's supposed to be a natural number, so I need to say x is an element of n, because it's the natural numbers. Okay, so far so good. All right, next one. Equal sets. Okay, equal sets are gonna be what you would expect them to be. They're two sets that contain exactly the same elements. Exactly the same. One-to-one -one correspondence is a pairing of elements between two such set, two sets such that each element of one is paired with exactly one element of the other. Okay, so it's a relationship that establishes a, a one-to-one. Everybody, everybody's got a buddy. Nobody's got two buddies. Nobody's got zero buddies. Everybody's got one buddy. Okay. Between two sets. Uh, I'll do some stuff in the middle here, but let me do the last one since you're already on the slide with it. Equivalent sets. Okay. So if I had asked you before equivalent and equal, you would have probably said they meant the same thing, right? And in our English language, we use them interchangeably. But for the purposes of sets, they're used slightly differently. Equal sets are exactly the same elements, but equivalent sets are two sets which have a one-to-one -one correspondence. What that means is that they just have the same number of elements, right? So maybe you had that family that you guys got together with when you were growing up and they had just the same number of kids as your family had. I had that. We had, my mama had a friend who had three kids and we had three kids and so everybody always had one buddy. It was great, right? We were in one-to-one -one correspondence. So they were quite the scene when they would go out, these two ladies, um, you know, and they would go to the mall or something with six little kids, and we were all really close in age, so I'm sure it was quite the scene. But um, we always had one buddy. So you could say that while the sets weren't equal, right, my family's kids, my mom's friends, family's kids, they're not equal, they're equivalent because we had the same number. Okay, so that's the difference between equivalent and equal here. Um, hang on. What you see happen when you're looking for equivalencies a lot of times is you see a group um, of elements. So um, I'm going to use the ones that I'm just talking about. So in my family, I have me, I have my sister, Ginger, and my brother, Chris. Uh, and we didn't always pair off age-wise. They weren't perfect pairings age-wise, but they were pretty close. So it is often the way we would do this. And so um, their oldest daughter was Christina. So, yep, we got together and there was a Chris, a Krista, and a Christina. That's fun, right? And then they had Amber and they had Megan. And so there's a relationship that you can draw where there is a person on the left paired with a person on the right, an element, but in this case, they're people. Um, and it wouldn't have to look like that. You could have them looking like this, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what the pairing is. There just is a pairing. But that leads us to ask the question, how many pairings are there when you have these equivalent sets? Right? And how many different ways could we pair off? So that's what we're looking at next. In fact, how many one-to-one -one correspondences are there between two sets with six elements? Okay, so imagine the scenario looks like this. You've got a couple of friend groups, friend group of guys, friend group of girls and each of them has six people. Everybody wants to go on a date. We're assuming nobody's married and nobody's dating anybody else right now. Let's be appropriate, right? They're going to go on a date and we're going to pair them off somehow. How many different ways could you pair them off? That's the question. Making sense so far? So here's the idea. We're going to put all the ladies in the room, okay? All the ladies in the room. Gentleman number one comes in and he chooses somebody to go on a date with. How many choices did he have? Six choices. He made, six, he made one choice out of six, but there were six choices he could make. So he has six choices. Uh, I'll do that in a second. Gentleman number two comes in. He no longer has six choices because the first young lady left and she went on her date. How many choices does she have or he does he have coming in? He would have five. The next gentleman comes in and he would have four. And then what's going to keep happening? Three, two, and one. 
And what happens is we multiply the results of each of these operations. Each of these choices that were made get multiplied. Somebody grab a calculator and multiply 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. What will you get? 720. That was six people. Is it any wonder it's hard to figure out who you're supposed to be with? There's 720 ways that could have happened. That's crazy, right? That's the number of different pairings of just a group of six people compared to the other six people or elements, whatever they are. Okay, is everybody with me? This is the way the pairing stuff works. All right, a little bit more vocabulary. Cardinal number. Cardinal number means the number of elements in the set, and it's written in of whatever the set is. Our set here is called S. So if you wanted the number of elements in the hands household, like that live in my household right now, we would say that N of H equals six. There are six people living there. If we wanted the number of people in this room right now, I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, I'm 13. We would be N of math 1203 equals 13. That's how many people are in this room right now, or N of Bailey 208, if you wish, or whatever. Okay? Finite. A finite set is a set for which the cardinal number is a whole number. Um, another way we think about it often is that you can count it, right? Is that you can assign a numerical value to it. That doesn't mean it's small, it doesn't have to be six, right? It could be 5,227 doesn't matter how big it is, but there is a number I can assign to it. Infinite set is a set for which the cardinal number is not a whole number. Okay? So it's so big it can't be counted, right? It goes on forever kind of thing. I'll know what infinity is. You know what an infinite set is by definition then. Then you've got the empty or the null set. The empty set or the null set is a set that contains no elements has a cardinal number of zero, and it has two ways that it can be written. Zero with a line through it, or curly braces that have nothing in them. That's the other way you can write it. Um, you can't mix these together, by the way. I can't put the zero with a line through it inside of the curly braces with nothing in it. That, you don't mix them up, right? No, don't double notation me. One notation, pick it. It doesn't matter which one you'd like, just pick one. So the null set. So what in the world would that mean? Well, we can talk about null sets all day long. In fact, we're going to jump to the end of the lesson, and we're going to create one. I should just change the lesson's order around, but that's okay. There we go. Last example. Example number 11. Just jump to it right now because it's a null set example. I'm going to give you an a null set example for my life, and then you're going to create a null set example for yours. And I'm going to ask some people to share. I'm not going to call on you, so you have to be willing to share. I'm not going to put you on the spot, but... Just so you know. All right, so here is a null set in my life. So this would be a null set in my life. The infants living in my home. I don't have any babies anymore, right? Infants living in my home, this is a null set. It's a set that has nothing in it. Okay? Write one down for you. A null set for you. Who's willing to share? What's a null set in your life, Ethan? The number of bones I've broken. The number of bones you've broken. Now, we wouldn't say number of bones. You would just say bones I've broken, right? Bones I've broken. I'm in that boat. I'm in the boat, too. I have never broken a bone. So some of you are shaking your head, and you're like, nope, lots of broken bones here. Okay. What else? Eggs in my apartment. You said Eggs? So you don't have any eggs in your apartment. Okay, eggs in her apartment. It's not Easter, uh, and apparently you don't like to eat the eggs. You do like eggs. Oh, you need to go to the grocery store, I see. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> I have two in my house that hate eggs, and I have one that would eat them all day long. She stayed with my mom recently. My mom has chickens. She ate six eggs at one meal. That's my little one. It's crazy. 
All right, what's another one? Okay, I'm pretty sure it's because the boys are in here because I almost always have a girl that says boyfriends that I have right now or something like that. Some of you are like nodding. You didn't want to say it out loud. That's what I usually have. Somebody says that. Okay, these are null sets. It's a description of something that just has zero in it. Make sense? Okay, cool. We're going to go back and count a few cardinalities of things and then we'll be done for today. This one. So we're going to find the cardinal number of the following sets. Remember, cardinal number just means how many are in it. How many of them are there? That's all it means. Okay. N of A. How many are in this set A that goes from 9 to 99? 90. We're close. How did you get 90? Okay, 99 minus 9. Was everybody thinking 99 minus 9? Is anybody thinking anything different? What is it? Faith? It's the one before. It's actually 99 minus, minus the 8. So if you remember when we did Gauss's method, this is similar to that where we're counting the number of objects. Imagine you started at 1. If you started at 1 and went all the way up to 99, you'd have 99 of them. But we're missing the first 8. So it's one, one fewer than that. So we actually have 91 elements here. Very good. How about B? 2, 4, 6, 8, all the way up to 2002. How many are there? It is 1,001. So we have 2,002 at the end, minus the number before in sequence. The sequence is starting at 2. The one before it would be at 0. And then I'm skip counting by 2s. It's just the evens, right? So this gives me 1,001. OK, the next two look funny, but they're not as hard as they look, OK? This says x squared such that x is 1, 3, 5, all the way to 99. So I'm going to write down an abbreviated listing of what's going on here. This is saying each of these are the x values, and I'm squaring them. So the set itself is 1 squared, 3 squared, 5 squared, up to 99 squared. That one's not 22, 99 squared. Okay, this is the set that it's describing. What I'd like for you to notice is that there's not any different number of them than there were when they defined what x was, right? It's still just the same number of things. So how many numbers are listed there? Anybody know? Hmm? Okay, so why isn't it 99? We're still skip counting, right? We're only doing the odd ones. Odd ones are harder to work with than evens. Uh, so we are only doing the odd ones. So the, I know this trips some of you up when we're doing Gauss's stuff. We start with a 99 at the end. And we need to subtract the number in front of 1 in sequence. What comes before the number 1 in this sequence? Negative 1. So in essence, we end up adding the 1 to it, right? And then we're skip counting by twos, like Rayleigh said, so we're going to divide by two again. So this is actually 100 over two, or it's 50. This one's small enough, you probably could count it if you wanted to. Wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, but this is a shorthand way of counting it, and it works for bigger sets too. D is kind of funny, OK? So D says these are all x such that x is equal to x plus 1. So I want you to think about that mathematical statement. x is equal to x plus 1. What numbers satisfy that equation? Somebody whispered it. Who said it? What are you thinking? Be bold. Somebody give me thoughts. Anything but one. Okay, so let's try anything but one. Try a number. Uh, let's try two since you mentioned it. If I put two in for x, will the statement be true? It won't because it would be two on the left and three on the right. Okay, what else? OK, 
Okay, if you did some real basic algebra, what would you want to do to solve this equation? Subtract the x. You'd subtract the x. And what would happen when you do that? Zero. You'd get zero on one side and you'd get one on the other side. And is that a true statement? No. no. So think back to algebra. When you got a statement like that, that it wasn't true at the end, what did you say? There are no solutions. Y'all remembering this now? Is it ringing bells? Okay. There are no solutions. Um, it usually shows up in Algebra 1 for the first time. That kind of an idea. Um, there's no numbers that when you add one to them, don't change. You can't take a number, add one, and get that same number back. Right? Yeah. Not the way our number system works. Um, we don't have that property. Like, that's not a thing. What that means is that what's going on right here is that this is the empty set. There's no solution, and this is actually another symbol for no solution that you've seen probably before, too. Um, so there is a relationship between them. This is the empty set. Now, that's not the number of items in it. The number of items in set D is zero, right? I just gave a t quiz in contemporary, a test in my contemporary math class, and where people are still mixing up this notation. The number of items, the cardinality, is zero. The set itself is the empty set, okay? So the mixing, don't mix the notations up, but that's what that would look like. And we're stopping right there for today.